If you're not awake already, oh baby, that is about to change. In the KCRW Annenberg Performance Studio, please give it up for Ezra Collective. <laughs> 
Ezra Collective live on Morning Becomes Eclectic in the KCRW Annenberg Performance Studio. That was incredible. Yo, well, thanks for having us, honestly. It's oh. such a, what a beautiful way to start like our North American run. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful stuff, place and stuff. So thanks for having us. It's been a vibe. Oh my God. And have you been to Los Angeles before? Is this your first time? Yeah, we've been a couple of times, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Is nice. this it's number this? three, right? This is round, I feel like it's round four. One of them. Round yeah, one, we, one we, of them. we've been here a few times. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. We're here with the brothers of Ezra Collective, uh, Femi and TJ. Yep. I love also watching you guys, how you make so much eye contact and smile at each other. Like it's a whole new set every time. That's how it feels to me. And does it, do you, are you guys improvising? How much of it is improvised and a surprise even to you? Yeah, I mean, that's why we make so much eye contact. It's such a privilege to like play jazz music and one of the like, I guess, core things in jazz is improvisation. So yeah. there's yes in solos, but also what section we're going to next, what song we're doing next and all of that stuff. We try not to be too rigid. Um, that keeps the excitement there and it keeps, yeah, when someone plays something cool, then obviously, we, you know, we're gonna react and it's always yeah. different every time. So yeah, that's why we're smiling. Yeah, that's amazing. And um, you know, the the music that you do, it's it's uh, it's fresh, but it's also an ode to the traditions, the foundation of music, and it's also like a part of um, a wave of musicians that are looking to jazz, but also incorporating various styles from around the world. We have Kamasi Washington here in LA, and tons of artists coming out of London. And um, I'm curious, from your perspective, what is the secret sauce? That is Ezra Collective. Wow, the se the secrets. Well, it wouldn't be a secret. Or the special if I told sauce. You. We'll say the special <laughs> the, sauce. The spe I can tell you the special one. I can't tell you the yes. secret one. But <laughs> no, I, I feel like the way we were taught music was kind of like the slingshot effect. If you like, the further you go back, the further you can kind of propel forward. Mm. And I feel like if we are as a band unashamedly Ezra Collective, whatever we love has to be heard in our playing individually and collectively. It's like, if you've been listening to King Toby all month, that has to be heard in your playing. And if you've been listening to Prince all year, that has to come out in the bass lines. And, and because we are just a product of, of our influences. And so I feel like the way we try and keep ourselves fresh and original, but also push ourselves is just trying to open that net as wide as possible, what we allow to influence us and stuff. I like a lot of the stuff that's happening in, in LA has had a part of the influence of the Ezra Collective story. Like you said, like Kamasi or Thundercat or, or all of those people in that kind of scene that have been making music. We try and let some of what they've been doing so greatly come out in our playing, but give it like a London accent. Do you know what I mean?
there's like this conversation kind of going back and forth between you guys, it feels like. And those styles of sound, I mean, I hear like, you know, like there's some Latin flavor, there's some Afrobeat flavor, there's also some hip hop, some grime. And are you like paying homage to any artists in particular? Are you thinking about artists while you play that have impacted your music that, that are taking it back, like in addition to the LA artists of now? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we have so much um, respect. And like you said, it's a, it's a foundational part of our music is going back and not just transcribing, but really like actually taking in what were they thinking and doing and all of that kind of stuff when they're making their music. And we try to implement the same thing so that when we're playing, we get to play from an authentic place. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the old school saying of real recognize real, I think, I think that's something that we try to make sure, you know, we don't want to be appropriators of anything. So anytime we're on stage, we try and make sure that we're doing it from a place of authenticity. And I guess when it comes to paying homage, people like, I'm wearing this t-shirt, like Fellow Kuti, for example. Fellow Kuti on the t-shirt, um, yes. Yeah, people like Sun Ra, there's just so many uh, influences on our music that hopefully shines through. And mm -hmm. yeah, and again, when it comes to hip hop, we're, we're being reverent of that as well when we're playing. And you've worked with the great Tony Allen, yeah, he's he's a hero. He's a friend. Um, I, I I had the privilege of having drum lessons with him. Yeah. So that was kind. Of, yeah, it's kind drum of bad. Lessons. Yeah, I know. So Tony Allen, famous drummer of Fela Kuti. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So he lived in Paris. So I yeah. travel from London on a bus to Paris, have a have a lesson with him and stuff. And uh, one of my fondest memories was me taking in like an Ezra Collective CD to my lesson. And playing it for him and him playing along to some of the Ezra tunes, do you know what I'm saying? And then being able Ooh. to show the boys wow. like, yo, look, it happened kind of thing, do you know what I'm saying? So kind of like he's really a hero of all of ours and one of the fathers of Afrobeat music. And, and so definitely that's one of the people we're trying to pay homage to every single song we play, do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Have you had the opportunity to play in Nigeria, the home of Afrobeat? And I know your heritage is from there as well, right? That that question breaks a heart. We've had a, <laughs> we've had about f five half attempts, one ah. solid attempt to make it happen. It still hasn't happened yet. Yeah. But I have faith for 2022 that New it will Africa happen. New Africa Shrine. No, sorry, 2023. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> jet lag, jet lag, jet lag. <laughs> but yeah, I want it to happen this year. We're praying and doing the relevant things. Who knows? But we're the closest we've ever been. So hopefully one day soon it will happen. And when it does, it will be magical. Oof, yeah.
Do you see yourselves as um, being the mentors to the next wave of musicians to continue passing the torch? Is that something that's important to you? 100%, 100%. Um, we grew up where we learned to play jazz music. The motto was each one teach one. And that's something that we've held true to or tried to hold true to as much as possible. Because um, this music isn't just for us to get to some sort of peak of a mountain and then look back at our lives and be like, look at how great that was. It's you know, finding pleasure and great joy in passing that on and being an inspiration to others because that's what people before us were to us and continue to yeah. be to us. Um, and just as we're getting older, like we started this 10 years ago when we were 16, there was no one looking up to us at the age of 16 because, you know, we were the smallest. <laughs> and now as we're getting older and seeing some of those 16-year-olds um, saying, like, oh, yeah, they're checking out Ezra Collective and stuff like that. Now we're in a position where it's like, okay, how can we help these people? So recently we were able to bring out some of the young guys on stage with us and stuff like that. And it's something that we we never want to lose. It's part of the fabric and DNA of Ezra is is, is bringing people through and inspiring them and trying to give them that push um, that you know we received from some of the people older than us. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, the new album, Where I'm Meant to Be, you have um, some really incredible features on the album. And you, s you got to spend like a lot of time creating it, right? More than usual. Yeah. You have your first music video from the album. Mm. Um, I'm curious, how does it work? So when you have such incredible featured artists, like vocalists, and then you're going to bring it back to the live setting, is there, do you feel like limited? Like, oh, we want to play those songs with the vocalists, but they're not here. Like everybody lives in different places. Yeah. How do you decide what to do live? No, that's, that's such a great question. I think a lot of the times I see every part of the song as a beautiful addition to the song, but the song is still king, mm. if you like. So whether, you know, Koji's there or not, it's still a wonderful piece of music. It's just kind of like another element to it. So I never really feel like restricted. I feel almost freed up because it's like, okay, Koji can't be in Los Angeles with us today. Sorry if you were expecting him to run out <laughs> later on. But um, yeah, if he's not here today, maybe no confusion will feel different because it's just with the five of us. And then the moment that he is here, it's like, oh my days, there's six of us together. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of the feeling. And that's how it felt when we were making the music. It's like we make something and we're like, oh my gosh, this sounds incredible. I wonder what other flavor we could add to it to make it sound even, even more wavy oh, let's call up Sampa and see if she's on it. And then she is, and it's like, all right, sick. But then at the same time, oh, Sampa's not about today. Let's play it without her, and it will still be wavy. Do you know what I mean? And that, that for me, it really kind of pays homage to the way I look at my, my favorite jazz records, and it's like, oh, Freddie Hubbard was on this session, but he wasn't on the one straight after. It adds a different dilemma. Um, dimension to it and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's like Nat King Cole wasn't here to sing Smile, but you still delivered it. We so still got away with it. Only just, just. just. If, he, if he was about it, it'd be great to got have it. Yeah, exactly. he, was, yeah. he was here, he's always yeah. here.